I've I've gone through some pretty intense periods of despondency and then also periods not so much of like optimism and everything is great, but periods where I feel really deeply resourced and capable of addressing our times and and you know not necessarily with anything grandiose, but the feeling of like I've got what I need to do what I'm here to do. And if you're an artist, you don't complain if your canvas is smudged or you don't have f quite the set of paints you'd like, you know, you take what you have and you make the best art that you can. So that's, that's kind of when I'm, you know, in a good place, that's kind of my attitude. I'm like, okay, we got a challenge here. We've got quite a situation and it's time to stop. It's time, if I can say this on air, it's time to stop fucking around and really get serious about why am I here and what can I do? What is mine to do? It all comes from uh, embracing first that we have a purpose here or that I have a purpose here, but also species wide, like collectively. And second, um, asking what is mine to do in these times? So you, you, you mentioned um, materialism and how our culture has been very materialistic and, and underneath what you were saying, and this is certainly in my work, it's a recognition that what we have seen as practical and realistic nuts and bolts solutions are coming from a conceptual tool set that's not big enough to address the crisis at hand, that we're kind of rearranging the decks on the Titanic and that the healing that is necessary or the revolution that is necessary goes to a, such a deep level that you can only call it something like spiritual, which does not mean non-material for me. For me, it means that it broaches the forbidden questions, that it dissolves what we thought was, was real, um, that it questions what we thought was possible, that it questions who we thought we were, why we thought we were here. Like these are the questions. Spiritual doesn't mean um, you know, non-material. It doesn't, it doesn't divide reality into two, the material and the spiritual. Uh, it is something that, that plums to those depths. It's those questions, like, why am I here? And we can ask that collectively. What, why is humanity here? Like, is it to exploit, to maximize our security, on this earth to dominate other species, to dominate the planet, to conform matter to the image of our own desires? Or is there some other reason why humanity has been given these gifts? And I, I don't, I'm not sure like if you really want me to go so philosophical, but I think that these questions are unavoidable if we're not gonna be rearranging the, the, the chairs on the Titanic. And everybody can, this is one reason why Many people I talk to, and I, I have this history myself, when the big one approaches, the, the, the Y2K, the 2012, the financial collapse, like the, the COVID even, there's part of me that's like, yeah, baby, bring it on because I want out of here. I want to be liberated from the structures that have confined us, the 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 social structures, the economic structures, the psychological structures. And so COVID comes along and along with like a lot of despair, a lot of suffering, not just the suffering of people who have been sick and, and, and have died in their families, that's there too, but also the suffering of people being locked down and masked and confined and, um, you know, uh, losing their jobs, losing their businesses the tens of millions of children who are facing hunger because of all this in the world, stunted children, starving children, like this is massive suffering. And there's also maybe part of us, certainly part of me, that finds some hope in this because we were stuck. And now there's no guarantee that we will become unstuck, but there's a possibility. So much has changed. It suggests to us, wow, Maybe more could change. Maybe mm. this reality that we thought was fixed is malleable to our will after all.